<laughs> He's trained very well. He sleeps good. <laughs> he ain't never gonna be a problem again. I ain't heard him bark since we put him down. And this will this is for tree my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. You warming up over there? Yeah, yeah. You ready to get this shit started? Definitely. We got, we got cigars, tobacco on YouTube. This is always going to get that us the great. views. Yeah, no, absolutely. You remember which camera to look at? The blinky red the one. The blinky red the light The blinky camera. red one. This is name pending. This is name pending. <laughs> I'm Keeper. And I'm Mike Holberson. Welcome. <laughs> it's been fun. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. So? By the time this gets, I, I think I might have to like escalate the like putting out of videos because we've got an extensive backlog now. Uh, I'm just gonna like every time I edit a video, get one put out. I'm get down one with put out, start the next one. Yeah, I think I'm down with being like one deep, but like we're like a lot deep right we're now. We're a lot deep. Real. We're like Texas roads. Construction cones are slowly gonna grow. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. It does. Have you ever gone down 10 and they just have the skinny, tall ones? And then when they get closer to finishing the road, they have the big boys, the barrels. Yeah. Okay. okay. Construction cones grow here in Texas. But first you have, like, the uneven paved road and yeah, I mean, horrible you know, drive. and I mean, all of our city roads are like that. Oh, no, it's great. I love living in blue cities. Bam! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, it's just... Great for my suspension and my tires. Are you glad that you ride a motorcycle? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I love going, good, good. Hold on. There's the other one. Good, good, good. By the way, speaking of motorcycles, you're on Reddit, right? Yeah. I assume that you're on Reddit with all the kids. Um, her, der, her, der, her. <laughs> but uh, have you seen all the like motorcycle wipeout? Like, yes. death wobble videos that have been coming out? Like, a what lot the of fuck a, is going on? So A lot of, a a lot lot of it of looks intentional. A lot of bikes have death wobbles. My Sportster had a death wobble. Anything over 100 miles an hour, I would have a death wobble, and it would just shake. The worst part is I had apes, so my hands are up here, and it's wobbling. The best thing you can honestly do on the Sportster, just let your hands off, and you pretty much just slowly start slowing down, and then it corrects itself. But a lot of the sport bikes, they're going mock Jesus speeds. Yeah. And... There's not much you can do, just because a lot of it's plastic up front, and if the aerodynamics aren't perfect, it just sucks. Well, it looks, a lot of the ones I've seen, it almost looks intentional. So it happens a lot because a lot of people speed and don't know how well to ride. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to ride well. So they'll speed and they'll get a def wobble real quick, and then it'll freak them out and they'll slow down substantially, or they'll wreck. And then get another bike and do it again. It's like, oh, it was the bike. Well, I'm never owning this brand again. Like, I'm never owning Kawasaki because I crashed on Kawasaki. Or I'm never owning Triumph. Or, And I met guys like that. Like, someone wrecked his, was it, he got the BMW 1000 RR? It's so, a track So, bike. it's, 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 it's the rider. mostly, it's mostly more times than crotch rockets? Still, yeah. Rather than cruisers? It happens to more crotch rockets than cruisers. Well, I mean, crotch rockets are cheaper than cruisers for the most part, right? Uh, yes. I mean, for, for like, a lot yeah, of entry-level, like, entry riders. Entry-level, you're going to more easily get a crotch rocket. Yeah. But a lot of the time, if you just put pressure on the bars, proper pressure throughout, then you'll be fine. But if you do the one hand, or you're just kind of cruise control and let it go, a simple bump could just wobble it. Or your tire being misbalanced, that could do it. Like, there's yeah. so many variables in there that it could well, just... Well, all my experiences with various bikers is that no one does proper maintenance on their vehicles. Mm -hmm. Like, none of them, like, do continue maintenance on their motorcycles. Like, their tires will be bald. Oh, that drove me crazy. And you're like, their inspections have been out for fucking years. When I was sergeant, that did not fly. It's like, you're grounded. What, you're... Your registration's out. You're grounded. Uh, you're not riding. Like, oh, you have bald tires? You're not riding. Well, I, I don't understand it. Like, you're already riding in a vehicle that is inherently more dangerous. You have an engine between your legs. That's you, pretty much it. You have an engine between your legs, and that's it. It's a bicycle with an engine between your legs. 
don't you want to make sure that engine and the wheels and everything else on it are fine? Yeah. Fine. Your turn signals don't work? Whatever. That's on you. You can use hand signals. Those work fine. But I'm not going to see your hand in the middle of the night. Mm Mm-mm. But, no, there's a lot of people that just don't care or, for their bike. Or they're, I think my favorite one is when they're, like, headlight, because most of the time there's only one headlight, mm-hmm. is, like, either really dim or pointed down for some reason. Oh, that's why I always added light. Every bike I had, I added pretty much train lights to the front of my bike. I'm going to be able to see in front of me. And my high beams, just Jeep headlights, eight inches. I'll put them on the crash guards. Don't care. Bright as all get out. But you know, I see in the middle of the hill country. But no, a bunch of people either get the really, really dim ones and they face them super far down because it looks cool. It's like. It doesn't look cool, bro. It doesn't look cool. If it's a show bike, what are you doing riding it? Mm. Should be riding a show bike around anyway. Unless it's your Sunday driver in the middle of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm coming back from Houston. It's like, dude, what are you doing with a 16-foot motorcycle? Well, it's raked out super far, and it looks really cool. And it's like, does but, it, though? But is it a good ride? Oh, no. Yeah. Horrible no, springs, no, I mean, but that's the question. it out. Yeah, that's the question, though, right? That's the ultimate question is, like, the primary focus is, is it a good ride? The secondary focus is, does it look cool without impeding that ride? See, watching some of these people park or just do a standing turn is hilarious. It's like, hold on, let me do a 23-point turn, 23-point K turn. It's like, oh, I know what you're talking about because I've seen some of those. I've seen some of those with the people we know. It's like an asterisk at this point. It's not even even a K turn that you would do in a car. It's forward, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, 20 turns later. We had another guy who flipped his, I hate, it's it's like a rat rod type bike setup, but you flip the, the bars down. So now it's, oh, yeah. instead of this, you have this. Yeah. Because you're hitting the tank. It's the same thing. It does the same thing. It's like you might as well get 16 foot bike. Because you have the same turn radius. Yeah, no, that don't make no sense. Again, you're, you're interfering with the functionality of the bike because you think it looks cool. And you know what? As a show bike or as a drag bike, 100% makes sense. You are going straight. Or you're just, it's a show bike. It looks cool, and you're doing it for a show. But not as your, I'd use this every day. I, I always thought that was dumb. I really did. No different than ape hangers that are so freaking high that your arm's all the way up here. It's like, what what's the point? Yeah. I mean, some people swear that they're comfortable that way. So, Macy's Day Parade came for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Ram. Every truck that was there pulling a float, Ram. Ram sponsored the Macy's Day Parade. I was like, I'm watching it. I wake up. Jess is like, oh, look, there's Ram. I was like, oh, there's Mike's truck. (laughs) Oh, look, there's Mike's truck. Oh, look, there's Mike's truck. (laughs) It's like, yep. I've been seeing, like, tons of rams on the road yeah in comparison to like a few years back like four or five years back i didn't see as many as i see now on the road was it jess's jess's jeep it was we saw in one of the commercials is like 2023 car of the year or car of the season or nfl spot that's was nfl sponsored car and it was her jeep specked out and everything same spec and i was like Okay. I mean, we bought it a year ago, but sure. <laughs> it's like, I, I guess we're ahead of the times on that one. Give it six months, I'll try to find the next car and hop on another commercial. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, was it? Did you see the Cybertruck has a, has a competition? I've seen that the Cybertruck looks like hot garbage. Oh, I, I, it looks uglier than Sin. I love no, it. No, it's not even... I get that it looks uglier than Sin. Here's the problem, is that like the manufacturing of it looks like shit. So, there's another one that comes out. It's the AI... I'll pull it up. Um, but... Because, like, the panel spacing isn't right. All Teslas have that, though. Like, you know that when you buy a Tesla, there's spacing difference. Oh, man. So, I know that I'm buying a piece of shit every time I buy this thing? No, why would I do this? I'll just go buy a real car. 
I'm not gonna pay for your fancy ass software. No, I'll go buy I'll go buy a truck like a real Texan, not a t Tennessean with your Tesla. Hey, you know it works. I mean, it's not like you're not going to. I don't know why you paid all this money for a Tesla just to go buy another car in six months anyway. So because it was a. Uh... It was like thirty thousand dollars, so I didn't even pay the stupid markup price. I mean, so you went, you've gone through a Jeep. Um, the Jeep is starting to have all the engine lights, though. Yeah, then you went to the Tesla. It's probably about time for you to cycle back to a truck again. Mm. Because I was you went, looking at you the did, cyber truck. You did, you did, you did sports car. So then you went Jeep, then you went Tesla. You know. Now you need to get, like, an old 80 Chevy. See, I've actually been looking at those. I really do like the older Chevys. I do, too. Like, and, and the old, old Fords. And they can sound mean. Like, like the 80s and before Fords look really fucking nice. Yes. So is it, it's AI Tech X robot truck. And it literally looks the same. Who's it put out by? AI Tech Okay. X. Okay. Robo truck. That's literally what they're pushing out. But that's what it looks like. It looks way better than the Cybertruck. Cybertruck looks like hot garbage. This was at a, the auto show, I think, in... It wasn't SEMA, but it was another one in California area. Or LA. California. But they were pushing out... These were, like, parked right next to each other. The spacing on both was hilarious. Mm. They both pushed out because you were talking about the spacing. This is just a concept that they're not 16 days from a release like Cybertruck is. Mm -hmm. Tesla is already behind on their Cybertruck by year without other movebacks. Yeah, manufacturing and everything. And AI Tech X is the company. And they're like, here's our concept car that looks spitting fucking image and we know that america and europe are like well we're only going with the tesla's charging port because that was i guess it was a bill or an agreement that everybody decided on this is the well, only... just one charging yeah. port type yeah it's like the sense. USB C thing yeah no come on let's make it easy guys so they decided to do that it's like now you have a knockoff of cyber track so it's not speaking of any of this but speaking of government laws and i Barely skimmed this. But did you see the thing about them trying to sign in that the FCC is going to manage fucking the internet? Mm-hmm. Was, like, was, was this... That was a Biden, like, executive order, right? Well, that wasn't... That's all in the same park of... Was it Europe and YouTube? YouTube algorithms starting to notice ad blockers, and Europe's like, no, you can't do that. Like, we just won't allow YouTube in Europe. So they reverted their algorithm back. <laughs> and it's just like, like we, we can try for this whole net neutrality bullshit that they've been pushing for years. Yeah. And people will still fight it continuously. It, it's, a, it's a losing battle. You have more people against it than you have for it. And money, yes, may rule the world. We have so many people that are just going to end up being pirates. Yeah, but I mean, that's what net neutrality is, right? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? The the corporation and the government and everything they don't own the internet at correct. large, but they're trying to. Yeah, they're trying to. And it's like that. It's not because they see how good China has it, and they went in on that shit. Like they China see how well China controls. Yeah, and they want the control. And realistically, until people actually stand up and actually vote or actually go for what they want. And that's, that's the thing is, I am not saying I'm not one of these weird ass fuckers who is like, stand up, fuck, take over the government. Because nine times out of ten, that just collapses a government, right? Correct. Um, what I'm saying is, hey, stand up and vote. Hey, get a movement going. Hey, yep. like, push your idea or your whatever and try and make something happen. You know? If you actually care about it. Because, like, 
I get out there and I speak about a lot of stuff, but like, do I care enough about it to there's the care feature. invest in like... my time and my life into mm-hmm. it? Because you're investing your life into this shit. You know, and if you're not careful, this shit can ruin your life. Yep, it's like, how much are you really invested in it? You see a bunch of bikers always go up to Congress here in Texas every year. Every year they do pretty much a, a biker march or a biker rally up there. And it's for biker rights. It's like, okay, well, the bikers got it. It's like, where's everybody else? Where, yeah. Where's all the other protests? It's like, no one, no one really cares. But well, that, the whole biker thing recently was because Texas is like, well, the amount of miles you put on vehicles is what we're going to charge you. And it was like, are you sure? Um, because a lot of us bikers put on fucking miles. Well, I put a ton of miles on my truck. There's a lot of people who do work shit who put a lot of mileage on my their vehicle. My first year, I put 20,000 miles on my bike. 20,000 miles. You tell me I got to pay for that shit now? Mm-hmm. Not only am I paying for the gas, registration, all that, but I got to pay for the miles? Nah, that's... Yeah. You better put, like, some some stipulation in there where leisurely vehicles or work vehicles or commute vehicles don't count. Like, But, I mean, you know, some YouTubers have gotten out there and they've started to actually try and, you know, put up or shut up, right? Mm-hmm. So, I... In that regard, I kind of... I, I mean, I respect oh, it. Oh, uh, was it? Brandon Herrera was out there buying guns at the San Antonio... Was it San Antonio buyback program? Yeah. I was like, God, this is... I was like, hmm, let me watch this. This is hilarious. Guess who's getting my vote? I'll buy your guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's definitely getting my vote this coming. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'm going to vote for him, too. He stands for pretty much everything I'm for. Yeah, no, I mean, all, all of his talking points are shit that I'm like, yeah, no, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some shit that he doesn't give a shit about that mm-hmm. I do care about, but whatever. That is, that's neither here nor there, right? But that that's every politician. Mm-hmm. Choose one, there's going to be one that you just don't like. I did see, and this cracked me up. So Biden was talking mad smack about AI. Nonstop, just mad smack. Well, AI got released to Biden. <laughs> and it looks like it's actually Biden. Damn. Like, has the seal and everything. They still don't know who released it. Has the presidential seal. It looks like like it's going all over Instagram, TikTok. It's a full-on official. It looks official. It looks like it came from him, the White House. That's fucked. And... He was like, you know, I don't agree with AI and AI's bad and everything, but you know, I'm old. Probably shouldn't be in office. I haven't ran this office since 1970. No, 19. No, whatever year it was, I haven't ran this office. And you know, we should all vote for Trump next election. God. <laughs> God. And then it just cuts off. It was like emergency broadcast and cut off. I was like, Oh my goodness, this is... Because AI's been rampant recently where everybody's Yeah, like, I mean, you know, a lot of people have been... Freaking out about it. Yeah. You get all the identity theft, stealing AIs. It was like, oh, well, mom, I'm in jail. Please send money here. Everybody's using AI or robots to do it. Yeah. It's like, and we just had it done with our president. Like, oh dear, this is this is comical. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think... Eventually, we're going to have to get into, like, image rights, mm-hmm. right? Like, you you have the right to your... But this gets into, da- like, privacy data. So data they were privacy. talking about token keys for your identity. Releasing well, token keys issued by the government. Okay, I'm not about that. <laughs> think about... Just the more you think about token keys for my own identity online. So, not only do I register every time I go somewhere, but to verify it's me, I have to put in my token key. And do you know where I've been? Uh... Yeah, no, I'm not about that life. But no, I mean, this this goes into data privacy, right? Because, you know, how much money does Facebook and Google and everyone else collect, Billions, make off the, yeah. the money that they collect off of our data points? Mm-hmm. 
you know, and they say, well, it's in the, it's in the agreements. And it's like, mm, how legally binding is that, though? See, I don't know, because once you sign your email, your email's a digital signature in a way. Right, but this is just a check mark. This is not me signing it and saying But if you're digitally. on a social media platform and you have an account on there, that's where they have you. If you don't and you're just freelancing in a way. Right, but that's that's where I'm getting at is like I don't necessarily agree that just because I use your social media platform that you should have the right to utilize my personal data to make money. I mean, that's that is what it is. That's the way it's used now. It's, I know. I, it's I'm no saying that than, I, I, I disagree with it. I disagree with it, too. I disagree with it in the sense, in a different subject, same concept as, like, me going on public roads. I'm part of the public, and I pay tax dollars for it. Why, if I go too fast, am I being fined to pay more money for this? Yeah. It's just, If I want to be stupid and I get in a wreck, that's what insurance is for it's like, why, why am I gotta have to do with insurance and a cop fine? Yeah. It's like to me, it's similar logic. I got behind a car. I decided to be a dumbass. Well, I I do run on the theory that if we just removed um, speed limits, or if we removed the requirement of speed limits and just you know on curves or stuff like that had suggested speed limits because you know. A lot of Tennessee has suggested speed limits. Your minimum is this, your max is this. Yeah, but I mean somewhere. I don't I don't necessarily care if there's a max, right? Yeah. But like, all right, hey, there's there's a hard turn coming up. You might want to take it at thirty five. This is what we recommend. Right. Cool. But if you want to haul ass at a hundred, go for it, brother. I believe in you. Yeah. Try. <laughs> Try. <laughs> yeah. I have no problem with this. You know, this is Darwinism, right? Mm-hmm. It fucking it weeds people out. Survival of the fittest. Yeah, it's not my fault that you were a dumbass. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I've said this before. Just take all the warning labels off things. Well, I mean, you Just know. for like, you know, 12 years. Just 12 years. I am, I am, I, I think I, I was listening or reading from some like super conservative and he was like, I want to do away with the nanny state. And I was like, yeah, I get it. I do. I'm, I'm tired of coddling everyone, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm very tired of, I'm tired of, you, you know. You better not be fucking waking about 3 p.m. and, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I want to, I want to push Baby Bird out of the nest, you know, even if Baby Bird is, you know. <laughs> I'm already doing that now with Ruth. Yeah, 25 years old or whatever. I don't care. She's like a year and change. And no joke, we're walk anywhere we go. She'll, she'll be, like, climbing something. She'll be climbing up the stairs. And I'm just like, let her go. Let let her climb. She's going to, it's an experiment to her. Let her climb. If she falls, okay, I mean, we got health care. I'll hopefully get there fast enough. But, I mean, she needs to learn. Yeah. I, I'm not going to coddle her. It's like, don't get me wrong. If she's going to, like, put her hands on the oven or try to climb in the oven or get or, into or, a fire. Yeah, or, or stick her hands or stick the fork into the into outlet. the outlet. Yeah, no, I'm 100% it's like, with you. There's levels, but it's like if you're climbing on the couch and you go a little bit too far and you fall off the couch, that's your own fault. Eh, if you're playing eh. on your own rocking chair, that's like itty this bitty tall off the yeah. ground. That's your own fault. Yeah, you I'm you not, you over tip and you fall off. Like she was she was playing with one of the benches that's like a bear bench or a stuffed animal bench at Ed's house and she's picking it up moving around and she sits on it and half her butt's on it half her butt's off and she falls off and she just starts crying and I just hold Jess back I was like let her cry Jess she'll, she'll work she'll it out get up she gets up puts a pass in her mouth comes over she's like that was so hard I was like but she learned because she sat there for a minute knowing you normally go and try to get her it's like she needs to understand that you're not always gonna rush to go get her not only that but you're you're not always gonna be there and sometimes you're just gonna have to get up and fucking deal with it <laughs> she went and got her nails done the other day it took like three hours because how busy they were it was thanksgiving time frame i get it didn't care 
And me and Ruth were just here in the house. Ruth's just running around. She's laying on the ground. She's tired. Not really crying. Like, every once in a while, she's whimpering. But then Jess comes home, and Jess goes to the kitchen. She starts crying. Oh, wow. She didn't cry for three hours. Like, she'd, she'd fall down, she'd cry, and she'd get over it. But the moment Jess comes in the house, she started crying. She was like, well, Mom's going to pick me up if I cry. Mm-hmm. And sure as shit, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she has you trained. She has you trained. But if we flip the script and we put in something completely different, you show up to work late, what happens? Yeah. It's I like, get into fucking trouble. You get into trouble. You show up to work on time. Nobody cares. No, no one gives a shit. But we're so trained, and people people are trained, and we're trained so much that it's like, you know where the cops sit. You know where they normally try to hide when you're driving. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're trained. All these things we we just go through life not even thinking about, and it's there. It's like, oh, well, yeah, a cop normally hides there. It's like, ah, you got pulled over. How did you not see the cop? He's always right. hiding there. <sighs> I don't know where you went with that cop thing but yeah i'm on board no cops like so coming back from uh, your parents house yeah they always like to hide under causeways or on the top of the bridge and we're we're driving back and there's a cop on the top of the bridge and you need a lighter yeah i can't see on top of the and we're driving back and there's a cop just sitting in the median on the top and i was like there's a cop up ahead and jess was like how do you know that? And it's like, I've gone down 10 long enough that if there's a cop there, he's a spotter. And someone else is further. Five miles down the road, there's another cop who pulled someone over. I was like, every time, without fail. No, I mean, it's why whenever I'm going into Banducky, I don't fucking speed. Mm-hmm. Is because I know. I know. Oh, they sit right there at Pipe Creek. Yeah, that like, they're going to be there. Yep. They sit right there off uh, White Privilege Road. On that little divot mm-hmm. where they have the full sight of you coming in, and you can't see them. Yep. It's like, there's so many. But that that's where I was going with the cops. Like, if you pass them enough, you're trained to, oh, they're going to be here. To the point that they may not be there, and you'll be driving slower. Oh. It's like a chocolatey goodness. I'll be opening up that after this. <laughs> it's so, it's just smooth. Yeah, I mean, it's got like a dark chocolatey flavor to it. Definitely. Mm. But everyone is trained one way or another. That's where I was going with it. Mm-hmm. Like, you get home, you have a routine. You get to work, you have a routine. It's just... I mean, most... Most. A lot of... A lot people <laughs> <laughs> most a lot well because you know i i got into this argument and we we were digging into the semantics at work about you know what do you actually mean when you say most what do you actually mean when you say a lot and it's like a majority of the people and you're i'm like you're using these phrases in your argument and you have nothing to back up mm-hmm. these statements you have zero to back up these statements. You're just saying this with the expectation that I'm just going to embrace whatever you say in regards to your yeah, argument. you just assume that I'm going to take whatever you say. You know? So you say stuff like most, and you say stuff like a majority, and it's like there's nothing to back up these statements. And so now I've become self-conscious about that, right? Later. <clears throat> well, no, me and a... Uh... Our mutual friend at the time had a discussion about that when I was VP. And pretty much he he was like, just don't speak in absolutes. And I was like, my response to him then was, a Sith always speaks in absolutes. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? He was like, oh, you're not. And we got in a different discussion at that point. But it was, it's like, no, I definitely choose my words very precisely at times. Yeah. But no, when I say most, this is what I'm talking about. Dictionary definition, a large majority, which means 51. Right. When Um, I talk about few, I'm talking like three or more. But when I'm talking about the population, like at large, it's hard to to justify using words and phrases like a a most or a majority because it's like, 
I have nothing to back up this statement except my own impressions of society at large. Correct, and statistics always go to whoever's trying to push whatever, honestly. So my my impression is that a majority of people X, right? So that would be a more accurate statement over than just a blanket statement of a majority. For like routines and whatnot? Yeah. I would agree. A large majority of people that I work with have a routine to the point that I'll sit down. I already came in with my coffee. Yeah. I'm not filling up my coffee until about 10, 11 o'clock when this is done. And I would argue that they function better. Well, I know I function better when I have a routine. Well, agreed. But that mine is I sit down, do that, check my emails, and I go out and smoke, and I come back. At this point, they're all coming in for work. They grab their coffee cup off their desk, and they all go through this routine of filling up their coffee, going to the fridge, putting milk, creamer, whatever in there, sugar. But because coffee pot's here to my desk and fridge is here to my desk, I just see it all. It's like, they haven't even logged in yet. But this is their routine. This is how they get to. I was about to say, normally my routine is get into work, do my checks, go for a smoke, Mm -hmm. take a poo, get back in. And then and then I'm like if online. If I have to poop, if I have to poop, that's it is different. fucking regular as clockwork. Mine's not. I I always poop at least twice a day. Yeah. It's either right before I leave the house or right when I get to work. I poo at work. Every time. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. Well, no, it's it's because Boss like I need a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I take a <laughs> shit on company time. <laughs> no, I mean it's uh it's the coffee. Right? Like, I, I got the... When I have coffee at home, without a doubt, I'm like, I can't get to work fast enough. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> and no joke, it's happened once. I got to work, shit my pants. It's like, I'm putting leave today. I'm going home. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is done. <laughs> I'm awake, but it's done. Of course, it was one of my early days, so I got there like 5 o'clock. Oh. And I was like... I was I was looking forward to this day, getting a bunch of shit done. And I come home at like five forty five, six o'clock. See, when you leave 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 <laughs> live even further out like I do, it's gonna be like if you do have to go home early, it's kind of like a chore. And God forbid you forget something at home because there have been days where I've, I've like done it. I've done it. I've, I've forgotten it's forty five minutes from here to work. And I've forgotten stuff, and I was just like, how much leave do I have? Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? It's like, by the time I get back home and then get back out here, I have been on the road for how many hours now? See, the plus side is, at least the plus side for me, is I have two ID cards. I have my work ID card, and then I have my disabled ID card. Yeah. So I can always get on base. So I'm not worried about that one. I, I just, I haven't gone to get my disabled ID card. It's, it's a freaking lifesaver. There's times I've forgotten my ID card at home, and I was like, I guess I'm just not logging into the normal internet today. <laughs> and every time you're like, you go to work today? Yep. <laughs> I just didn't bring my ID. I don't know how many times that's happened. Woo, so. Okay, back into it, right? break. We need a little, little bit of a breather. Um, so, so we, we missed earlier on your book recommendations. Yeah, because normally I, we've been trying to start it with we, my we book recommendations. Start with it. I just finished 4.5. I'm on book five of Galaxy's Edge. Yes. And the whole trip back from uh, your parents, it was like, <laughs> I played it and Jess over your phone asleep. I was like, okay, I'll put on, I put on a Harry Potter book. And we talked more about that because we both listened to the books before, read them, so... It's more conversation of what's actually happening. Yeah. So I'm excited. What what book recommendation? What have you been reading? So I know that I was telling you that I was reading stuff by John Ringo, and I think mm-hmm. I mentioned a couple of them. And I bought, I got his book. I went on to. I no- started it. I did start it. Did you really? I listened to like the first five minutes. I was like. Nope, I can't. I gotta finish Galaxy's Edge. I can't do this to myself. You're like, I know I'm gonna go deep into this. I can't do it. I, I know it's more than five minutes. I listened to probably about thirty minutes of it. And I was just like, I'm hooked. That's that's good. We'll stop there. This is more than a teaser. 
This is like, here's your entree, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I got to wait. Well, I'm, I'm reading another one done by him and another author. Um, and this one is still sci-fi. Um, completely different, separated from everything else. Okay. You know, separated from... But this one is about, you know, it's based in a sci-fi empire, right? Yeah. And it's about the third prince who is considered, you know, worthless and, you know, just kind of, you know, a dandy, you know. Um, How many books do you go through a week? This week I have gone through five books. Yeah, see, it takes me a little bit while. (laughs) One was an audio book and four of them I read myself. Okay. I just audio in, in, is... in the audio book I had already read, but okay. then I wanted to listen to it as an audio book. But I was going to get into the to the audio book because the audio book was um, uh, Jim Butcher's one of Jim Butcher's latest novels, uh, and this one is for his newest series, the Cinder Spire series, right? Um, and the Cinder Spire series, I forget what the first book was called, but it's essentially think like. I've heard this series before, and it wasn't from you. So think like, like airships, right? Ardvark, Ardvark read this. Ardvark series. read this series. Yeah. Yep. And so he was talking about it last time we were playing I think Risk when, of Rain. I think when I was hanging out with him, we were talking. You about recommended it. it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, my like this book." And yeah, because they just came out with the second one, which is the Olympian affair, mm-hmm. right? So, but getting into what it is is it's you know think like. You know, like, Age of Sails, you know, like, you know, 1700s Age of Sails with everyone being all proper and, yeah. you know, cast the main sails and all that jazz. time frame. But with, um, with airships, right? Okay. That makes me think but of... But they're uh, not blimps, right? So don't think blimps. It was like, was it, it wasn't never ending. It was like, uh, everlasting. All I know is there was an airship and Robert De Niro in there. He was the cap. Uh, oh, something star. I know it was like star ending or never. No, it was. Ah. Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about though because that's because a really good movie. Wall, yes. And there's three witches. Yes. And they get it from. They live longer from the star. Yeah. And that's just on the trailer that it shows you. Yeah. No. That. Did you watch it? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so good. Like, it's that's... so good. Like that one came out of left field for me. Well, yeah, and then they put him on there, Robert De Niro, and it's just like, okay. why is Robert De Niro? And in then this? you're like, and he's a cross dresser. Oh yeah, but his character was so good. Oh, it was, but it it was it was a good movie. Never ending star, it wasn't starstruck. Mm-mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it, um, but going back to airships, which. Got yeah. me onto this. Yeah, so, you know, um, for... Oh, well, now I was going to reference something, and now I can't remember the name of that. Oh, fuck that. Alzheimer's coming in hard and fast, son. Stardust. Stardust. Yep, he was in Stardust, and he was the captain of the airship, which is more fiction, but everybody is... You're saying everybody's doing this. So, but yeah, so when we're saying airship, think closer to, like, Final Fantasy airships, right? Air- so kind of like... Was it a uh, Final Fantasy? I mean, that gives me more of more of an idea. I'm thinking of uh, Treasure Planet type airships. Yeah, yeah, with sails. Yep, it's very much with sails, right? It's and very Treasure Planet. Definitely. Yeah, um, you know, it's an alternate world. Like, there's a lot of like, like people live in these spires. You know, these towers. Um, Coruscant, and Star Wars. They can't, they can't be on the ground. Because the entire like surface area is populated essentially by monsters, um, and you know there's, you know like etheric energies that power like you know, you know crystals that they can use for weapons and shit like that. I don't know. It's very cool. I get I got very into it. I was kind of into Jim Butcher's other series, um, which was like urban fantasy, yeah. like you know, urban paranormal fantasy stuff. I fell off of it at some point, point like book 10, I think. But, um, yeah, some, he very after much. You, after you read too much of one thing, it's kind of just like, well, it, I it, need more, I need more. Yeah. Like, 
And then, like, he very much, I feel like, upgraded his prose. Like, the way characters are written and the way he he has been writing this one, it just, like, I feel very engaged. Okay. You know? I mean, that's starting out with Galaxy's Edge. Like, 4.5? Oh, my goodness. Great fucking book. Because mm. you're cycling between the past, the future, or current day in the past and how Rex technically has lived forever. Yep. And they all went to this village and they all became pretty much gods. Mm -hmm. They were all, they were part of the second voyage over and first voyage. Like you hear all these different things. You're just like, my mind can't comprehend all this. Yeah. No, there's a lot going on. Holy shit. And then it was like, well, Rex really couldn't die. And then Rex finally died. And you're just like, so here's the funny thing about... I was thinking about that the other day, right? Jess asked me what KTF was. Oh, did she? Because they never actually say what KTF is. They do at the very first book. Not until late in, though. So uh, the first book, they do. So I'm ready four and a half books at this point. She's like, they always say KTF. At this point, they're not Legion. They're talking about the Black... Yeah, the Black Legion. Uh, yeah, the it was. Black it's not Black Legion, but it's not um, yet anyway. The, the shock troopers. Nope. It's uh. It's the. It. They're definitely setting it up for that. Yeah. They're not the dark. Um, they're not the pretty much CIA guys, not the undercover guys, but they're. Nether ops. Nope. Nether ops are those. The those are the CIA guys, but is like the black ships. They haven't officially labeled oh, anything. Oh okay. Yet. You can you can definitely see the setup and where the politicians are in it, and you can definitely see where they're trying to go with it, and I like it. But Jess goes, so they're CIA operatives. What is what is KTF? Like, <laughs> Kill them first. <laughs> She's like, really? And I was like, y- yes. It's like one of my favorite new sayings and now. It's like, it's like KTF. But I, I think about when I was overseas, I was like, I'm going home. Well, KTF. <laughs> It's like, if they're shooting at me, I'm shooting back. Mm-hmm. But going back to the book series, it's like, I I love it. Um, Galaxy's Edge is killing it. And then I started the other one you yeah. recommended last time, and I even bought it. And I'm I'm starting it 30 minutes into it, I'm just like, oh, i got to stop. I can't, I can't <laughs> do both. I don't have time in the day. <laughs> I do listen at work, though. Yeah. So that helps. Yeah, I can't listen at work. I I can't focus enough if I'm got that on. I need to have. See, I can only because most of the stuff that comes to me at this point, since we've already built, we've developed until new company comes in to develop more stuff. A lot of my stuff is really medial and repetitive. So it's just mine. It's pretty much helped us job with more money. Yeah, that that's where I'm at right now. And it's like, I built what you guys use at Help Desk, and um, here, yay. But you were talking about Metal Gear Solid before we started this. Okay, so... I want, I want to jump into Mario RPG. It's a remake from 20 years ago. Yeah. And Nintendo pretty much gave a bit of, big middle finger to everyone. How did they do that? You want a hard game? Not from Nintendo. It's no, like, they won't do it. Oh, no. They... The game is so easy just because it was like, oh, you're Mario. Here you go. Here's a shell. Have fun. Oh, it does like 20,000 damage. It's like, there's no hard mode. There's no hard mode. It was like, I love the games, but give me a hard mode. Like, I know most of these games are for kids. Yeah. But even in Mario Brothers, you have, oh, if you collect everything, now we go to the Kaizo levels, the actual hard levels where... Unless you're good at the game, you're not going to make it. You can see, that's why Sonic is superior. I would agree. The few Sonic games I have. <laughs> I think it was, it's the one with... Uh, I'm not big... I don't know that much about Sonic. It's uh, Black Sonic. That one. Shadow? Yep, Shadow. The one where you play Shadow and pretty much has the good-bad mm-hmm. level to it. That's the one I played. And that one had a difficulty setting that was just like, ow, like this sucks. 
<laughs> but, I mean, I just I just remember the original Sonic and Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Two, um, because I have a Sega Genesis. I, I still have that Sonic. Fucking yeah, I've, I've got all of those. I I love. I that have Sonic. I've got the 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 Sonic and Knuckles where you plug the the pack, the Sonic packs into the top of it. Every time I fly on a plane, I always bring the Sega Genesis, the handheld, where it has six batteries, and not just double A's, no, D's. Six D batteries, <laughs> just because someone will always ask, and it was like, because this is my. I always played that game growing up when we were traveling, and I would beat the game every time when we were traveling. So it's just it's nostalgic at this point, but that is probably one of my favorite Sonic games. For me, it's just the music in the games, right? Like the music immediately takes me back to being a kid sitting on the floor, fucking, you know, playing. Sonic games. Back when you could just sit on the floor and not hurt your tailbone from being on the floor for so long. A bunch of the Super Nintendo games do that. Or Nintendo. Yeah, Super Nintendo. I didn't get a Nintendo until 64. See, we didn't get the 64 until we were in middle school. But they were all my dad's consoles. So we got the Super Nintendo, two guns, Lost Vikings, Sonic. Like, all these were what we were playing. And two guns, it you had you had three lives, and it's very much arcade, hundred percent arcade. Yeah. You start from level one. There's no save points. There's no. You just keep going, and if you die, hopefully your second partner can make it further and bring you back. But that was our bedtime game, and my dad would intentionally suck ass, so that way we could, you know. Well, and see, sooner. that's where I think roguelites, they kind of fit that, that niche that we need because we get some progression, but we still have that hard factor of, well, you die and you, you just die. Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of progression, but mostly you just die, and that's it. See, and checkpoints and save points are nice. Honestly, the game I would like for them to rework, Gauntlet Legends. Gauntlet Legends, Yeah. We've tried to do a couple different ones, and, and they've been disappointed. Don't. Like, the new one, it came out 2008, was horrible. Mm-hmm. 2012 was horrible. Mm-hmm. I think 16 was the Seven Sorrows, and it just didn't have the same feel. But I have OG, Godly Legends, and Dark Legacy yeah. in the house. I mean, one of these days, that'd be a fun game to, to stream and play. Or... Gotta see if I still have a capture card. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know if I do. I might have tossed it. Who knows at this point? It's a... But yeah, no, I mean, so Konami is doing a re-release of, where are you looking for? My lighter. Your lighter's to the left by your... Konami. Um, they did a re-release of uh, Metal Gear, mm-hmm. like volume... You were telling me. Yeah. It, it wasn't, it's not like it's full remastered. No, 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 no. It's, no, the same, no. it's same game. Same shit. Because I did one, and like, that was after a camping trip. And I was like, camping trip hungover. And so it was a Sunday, and all I wanted to do was just sit in my recliner and hang out. And I just played through the entire first game. Just played through the entire first game. And I fucking annihilated it. Me and Goose were talking about a Halo. OG Halo. It's like, oh, land part of this bitch. Dude, I, I've i got the Master Chief collection, and me and Steven I have, have the played... Master Chief collection. Me and Steven have played through that, and if you ever get the fucking urge, oh. fucking hit me up, I'll hop on with you, because I can always get down I to Halo. I don't have it on the computer. I had it on the console. Mm. Doesn't it do crossplay? I thought it did. It might now, actually. I thought yeah. it did crossplay. It might now, yeah. I mean, shoot, I used to play legendary with all the skulls on mm. like we used to this was back when we were me and my buddies were building a team and getting set up for leagues and whatnot oh dear god no but i have very fond memories it, especially you know playing legendary on the first game at home and you're trying to get through the uh the library Yes. Because all the flood all are the coming flood, at you and then the at con- once. Yep. And and the only real way to get through the library is to haul ass 
And never stop hauling ass. And it doesn't get better with difficulty. No. It just gets worse. No. They just start throwing numbers. The flood has always been the worst part. I love the flood in um, Halo 3. Yes, Halo 3. I love the campaign of Halo 3, honestly. I really love the campaign of Halo 3. Like, I love I think the campaign of Reach also. Reach also had a very... I think the worst campaign... Two. Two was my worst campaign. No. The worst campaign I ever played, I didn't even finish it because I hated it so much. Well, I much. stopped playing after Reach. I played five? Nope. See, I, I... My cousin had it, right? Because I wasn't going to buy the new Xbox I then. bought four, but I haven't played it. Four was pretty good. Four... four Four was it fantastic, but it was all right. Like it was an enjoyable play, right? It didn't like blow my mind. I played. It I wasn't think, a reach. It wasn't a three. I played. I don't know. First two missions, and they messed with the what was it the, the battle rifle. I didn't like the rework of the battle rifle. Yeah. That killed it, and I was like, I'm done. I can't. Like reach and Halo Three were really my last ones. Like, one was amazing. Blood Gulch. Ugh. Mm. Throwing grenades across the freaking map. Back when you could just run tanks anywhere. Oh, yeah. You could run I'm tanks up the side of a anywhere. Wall. Yeah. You're figuring I out somehow how to... got in the building. You're glitching your ass outside the map. Yep. People are like, what are you doing? And it's like, yeah. I what had... was the other one? It was, uh, it was two bases. There was a river running through it. And there was a... Both sides had a little hidey, hidey spot in the center, but one was more hidden and easier to get to. I don't remember what that was. I don't Beaver remember Creek? what that's called. Yeah, Beaver Creek. I think it was. Woo. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Beaver Creek. I mean, this is back when I could really enjoy shooters, right? Because like I can't. I think enjoy I've talked. To, I shooters. think I've talked about it on podcast before. Is that Beaver Creek? I cannot invest the time to get good enough to enjoy multiplayer shooters anymore. So I I started the whole battle royale thing. I started with PUBG. Mhm. And I, but I was always a sniper. I've always every game I played, I was always a sniper. Yes, I'm the one camping and I'm going to sit there for 30 minutes and get maybe one or two kills. Well, but I, I'm defending the flag here and nobody's getting gear. I remember in AIT, me and my roommate, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Um, <laughs> we we were we played uh, Modern Warfare Two, and we we shared a console, right? So we played Modern Warfare Two, and we played Halo Reach, and we both got pretty fucking good, dude. Battlefield 1942. 1942. I still have the plane stick, the joystick in there to fly. I still have all this stuff. That was, that was what really got me into shooters. That came out. Let's see, we're in Tennessee, two thousand six, two thousand seven. That's when I was playing nineteen forty two on my dad's account with all his military buddies. You want to hear something funny? Let's go. Ash Daddy. Um, he played Quake too. Okay. Uh, I at one point I gave him my N sixty four console, and he played. He loved 007 Goldeneye. Oh, yes. He played that game all, like, he knew that thing like the back of his hand. He played Perfect Dark. He played, <laughs> he played, because I had this extensive N64 collection, so he played, like, the Pokemon yep. games, and, like, he played all these different all games. It. Yeah. It's there. I'm going to beat it. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, he wasn't, like, a gamer, right? Like, he wasn't, like, really good. It's just... He had fun. Had time. Yeah, he yeah. had time and he had fun with it. Yep. And you know, so that was really what I did. Um, you know, I gave him my Xbox at one point, but he didn't really get into any of the games with it. So see, the worst part is I tried to get my dad into Minecraft when it came out, try to get try to get him out of his military mindset with his PTSD, trying to get him more it's like, well, Minecraft, you're only killing mobs. You're not killing anything. It wasn't until like five years later he finally got into it. And now he's playing with my brother all these other games and Well, I got it was like this is this is the same dad. All right, we're live. Well we we're, we were talking about gaming. So, so Ash Daddy, you gave him the So I had uh So when 
you were saying something, but it doesn't matter. I was matter. talking about my dad, Minecraft, coming back yeah, from the yeah, military. Yeah. But what you say isn't important, though. Well, yeah, that's normal. You know, Hurry um, up, get bundled up. You cold. But, listen, I'm cold. I need my grandma lap blanket. <laughs> my grandma lap blanket. I got one of these at work because <laughs> it gets so cold. I'm sure you do. <laughs> it gets down, it gets down into the 50s. A lot of people sent home from work because it was 42 degrees in the building. That's happened before. And I was just like, this is nice. I'm in there with a short sleeve. Everybody's like, you're insane. I was like, this is nice. You are insane. And they're like, all right, everybody needs to leave the work center. We're, we're closing up shop. It's too cold. And I was like, but this is the first time it's actually nice. But games, Ash Daddy. So for a while there, he played the like Facebook like farming games. Mafia. I did Mafia, too, back in the day. I did back that one. Back in the day. Yeah. I did Ooh. do Farmville for a little bit. I did Farmville. And then it got pay to win, and yeah, I, it no, lost I, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so he was like into it, but he was getting frustrated because it was a lot of pay to win stuff. And Mm -hmm. he was like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, I got a game that you might be interested in Stardew Valley. Oh dear. That man, what, because I had to like, like, it was funny because teach some of it to him. I would come, I would come by to like hang out with him at his house. And then he'd be like, I'm trying to do this and I just can't figure it out and so I taught him how to do like fishing and how to do yep. you know how to do the dungeon stuff and you know how to do relationships and but once he got it, it was like game over it was God. game over and he's like got just millions of coin just millions of coin just stacked up and then I was like well I mean you know why so, don't you spend it I don't want to well but he would it was just that he was making so much <laughs> That it was getting, like, impossible, you know, when you're getting to, like, year 14 or some shit, right? It's, like, impossible to spend it. Um, That's true. So, you know, and I was, it was to the point to where I was constantly, like, updating him. Hey, hey, they just released these, you know, updates for the game. You know, you should check it out. Like, they did, like, fishing pond update or whatever, like a fishery you could build or something like that. Um, There's the new one that just came out that my sister's playing. It's... It's similar to Stardew. Similar. It's not. It's not Stardew. It's, it's not my Animal time. Crossing. At, Animal Crossing. Oh, Animal Crossing. That everybody's on now. My sister goes, yeah, I wake up, I have my coffee, and then I play 30 minutes, and I do my daily tasks. And I was like, you totally just made this game sound like a chore. That just reminds me of back in the day I had a friend. We were going to have a party at like his apartment in Austin, and I'm like, what's he doing? And it's like, I don't know, go track him down. And I go into him, and he's in his bedroom. He's like, hold on, I'm on WoW, I gotta do my dailies. And I was like, bro, we're about to have a party, calm the fuck down. I I hate that game. games have turned into, oh, this is my daily task. I just, I'll play the game while I'm gonna play the game. Because I have phone apps that I have daily tasks. I was like, eh, eh, if I get to it when I'm on the toilet, cool. If I, not, eh. I can't. I can't even, like, get into phone games anymore. I've tried a few times. I'm always, like, disappointed. Mine's a... It's an AFK one, and that's all it is. It's pretty much it. Arrows, bows, merge up, and then you deal more damage towards a boss, and that's it. Yeah. But it's one game where I can... If I'm cleaning, I can just screen share it to the TV and Listen, watch it, and it looks cool. I'm, I, I remember Temple Run back in the day, okay? I still have Temple Run. <laughs> no, I don't have it on this iPad. <laughs> I have it on one of my iPads. One and two. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I remember when they came out with two. I was like, oh. was did it you play Geometry P- Dash? Did you play Plague? Yep, I still have Plague Incorporated. Yeah. I, they've, they pushed out more updates. Did they really? Yeah. I might have to cycle they back around. They actually have a COVID strand on there, too. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Like, they've they've gone crazy with it. But I mean, it. I don't know. There's a lot of games that I play that's just like, eh. I think one of my favorites when iPhone just came out was uh, Enigma, and it was a water one. Yeah. It was a water puzzle. You had to get all the blue drops into this little bucket, with the, like a trampoline or. iPhone just came out. Yeah. iPod just came out, and you could have these games and yeah i remember those early games they were fucking amazing they were rough <laughs> I loved them. and now it was like the game doesn't you can get the apk 
but you can't get the game online anymore. No? They have Enigma 2, but they don't have the first one. Damn. Or was it Tap Tap Revolution or Tap Tap? They don't have that one either. It's like they're on like five or six. They don't have any of the original. See, I remember when the like Xbox indie games were ge- getting real popular because they had like Geometry Wars. <laughs> N plus Dash. The N plus. Oh, God. N plus. Oh, I man. I just saved myself. Holy but... shit. I <laughs> fucking, because I had a computer class at school. And so me and some of the other folks in that class, we would play in plus all the fucking time. And like, I got like master level at this game. So ours was, we we're in MIDI class. MIDI class is working on pretty much making music from this. We want a small snippet of it. So play it on a piano and get it matching. So we had to do that, match his file, make the whole song. Well, what it turned into is all of us are playing this, mech warrior game (laughs) and because we're all on the same land we have like 42 people in this classroom because it's it's your normal freaking band classroom staged all the way up but they have computers there because this is the midi class and everybody's learning drums and how to do the computer side of it yeah and no joke 42 people are playing this game oh god to the point we're bringing USBs, plugging them in. Teacher said it was okay. Teacher hops on. Kills us all. Destroys <laughs> us. He was like, you got to understand. I may have started this year being horrible, but how many classes do I have? What do you think I do if I'm not grading stuff at home, which all I got to do is play them side by side, and if it sounds <laughs> off, I know mine's good, so you're getting a discount every time it draws my attention away from a game. It's like, that's that's fucking genius. That's genius. And he would, he'd be fully kitted out in all the armor. Pretty much every time you kill someone, part of your armor becomes gold. It means it's prestiged. And you can only prestige like eight times. So he's fully kitted out, shiny chrome gold. <laughs> and it was just like, avoid that guy. <laughs> and he'd just throw rockets our way, Gatling gun, and just destroy us. But, but yeah, old games, jeez. Oh, we should continue this. Mm-hmm. Offline. Offline. <laughs> so, hey, this, this has been pending. Name Pending. I'm Mike Culberson. I'm Keeper. And I want you to fuck that like button. Throw a comment below. Tell me what you like, dislike, and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs>